Good morning, Faith Family. It's Thursday. We're on day four of our week-long look at love. Still dealing with the idea of messy relationships. And I'm going to kind of merge day four and day five together in terms of object lesson because on day five, our writer says there's just some things that naturally go together. And he gives a few examples of that. And I'm going to use the contrast of that in today's lesson to say there are just some things that don't go together. One of the examples we know is oil and water, they just don't mix. They won't merge. They won't come together. And many of you know that from experience, either in your job vocation or through something you've done uh, at home or through other avenues. And so we look at our text and the writer says this. And of course, we're talking about John in chapter 4, verse 17. In this, love is made complete with us so that we may have confidence in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so also are we in this world. There is no fear in love. Instead, perfect love drives out fear. Because fear involves punishment. So the one who fears is not complete in love. You know, it's interesting how the writer asks us the question, you know, what are some of the things you're afraid of? And some of the examples he gives is being on stage in front of a crowd is one example. And of course, in the context of this verse, we see that two things that do not go together is fear and love. John says, first in verse 17, love is made complete with us so that we may have confidence in the day of judgment. And then he comes back again. He says, the one who fears is not complete in love. And so this idea of fear is specifically talking about eternity, eternity and the judgment that will come with death. And John says that we are perfected in love. We are complete in love. And of course, this goes right back to the end of verse 16. At the end of verse 16, John says, God is love. So you notice in verse 17, he says, because as he is, so also are we in this world. He, no doubt referring to Jesus, Jesus being the incarnation, the human representation or revelation of God in the flesh. And of course, that comes to us by the Holy Spirit. And so just like Jesus did not fear man, he did not fear persecution. He certainly did not fear punishment because he obeyed God perfectly. Why did he obey God perfectly? Was it fear of the punishment that God would bring on him if he did not? No. It was because of the love bond that existed in eternity past that could not be broken because it was a perfect love. It was the agape love that motivated him to obey God in all seasons and all circumstances. And so he didn't fear punishment. And John now is taking that application and bringing that into the context of the church. And some argue he was writing to the church at Ephesus, possibly in a specific audience, but he was writing in general terms as far as his audience goes. He says, we have perfect love and that perfect love drives out all fear, especially the fear of eternal judgment that will come in the final death. And so think about this in terms of the last question the writer asks. How can you learn to focus on eternal things in order to overcome your fears? And that one eternal thing that we should focus on daily is our love for God. It's the reason why the very first commandment says, love God supremely. You're going to have no other gods before me. He is to be the primary love of our life. The Shema, love the Lord your God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Why is that the greatest command? Because when we have that command correct, when we have love for God as that supreme posi position in our life, it takes care of everything else. I'm telling you, it's that trickle-down effect. And it certainly takes care of a fear of death and a fear of judgment will come because in love, we are complete and we have confidence. So I hope you enjoy these two verses. They're rich. They should assure us and encourage us. And as always, remember, live sent.